Hey everybody, this is Scotty with Sketches Garage, and today we're going to tear apart the Angry Lover. Um, some To catch some of you guys up, this is just a stock bottom end 454. We put a cam and a set of rectangle port heads that were pretty rough. And uh, we had to work them over pretty good to get them to work. Uh, we took it out one time, and it the motor it sounded good, it wrapped good, it did a really nice burnout. Uh, I uh, brought it up on the trans brake, let off the button, and it left okay. Went out about 100 foot and just started falling on its face. Uh, it didn't lose oil pressure or nothing, but you could tell it was sick. We decided to make another pass in it just to kind of see what's going on. Uh, it developed a rattle. It never lost oil pressure, but it developed a rattle. So we decided to just pull it out and kind of start over. Uh, when we first got this motor, we thought the bottom end was good, but it had a spun rod bearing. And uh, I'm thinking that's what it did again. I know I made mention of it in the video before that I was talking with the guy I bought the motor from. Uh, he had talked like he had uh, put rod bolts in a motor before without resizing the rods. And I thought it was this motor, but it was a different one. So hopefully we can tear this bad boy apart and see what's, what's going on with it. Uh, the first thing I like to do is just... Uh, your spark plugs and your oil those two areas will tell you a lot um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the plugs out the plugs if you get any that are real wet or oil fouled you know that could be in any number of things like a broken ring problems in the, the heads if they're real wet you might have a compression issue going on These so far, they all look pretty good. If anything, they look a little on the lean side. Uh, I'm not an engine expert by no means, so if I miss something that you guys think is really important, please put it in the comments below. Uh, I want this channel to be an area where people can come and learn. I just know a couple things and you guys know lots of things so if we put it all in the comments and lay it out there for everybody maybe somebody's out there going through a problem I might not have the answer but you've ran across it before and you might have the answer so don't be afraid to put it in the comments below something you think that I may have missed out on because like I say I'm just one guy that knows what I know we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil What you're going to look for here is make sure you don't have no metal shavings or any sparkle in your oil. That's an indicator of usually bearing failure. I try not to make a mess, but if y'all come over here, you'll see that I spilled a little bit on the floor. It'll be okay, though. Won't be the first time. It won't be the last time. We do got some bad news, it looks like, straight out the gate. Most dipstick or uh, drain plugs got a little magnetic tip on the end of them to catch any trash or anything. And as you can tell, there's clearly lots of metal shavings. There's actually a metal shaving bit right there. That is not good. That's not good news for us at all. Last time after we uh, seen that the crank was bad, we just took a crank out of another motor. So, you know, by all rights, we didn't really do it technically the right way. Just the, the other crank, it looked good, so we did that and put bearings in it. Um, maybe something wasn't jiving, maybe still something going on with the rods. We'll pull it apart and find out. Someone's eating 
their Wheaties that day. Another thing I like to do before tearing the motor apart, make sure you got an area clean, cleaned off to where you can set all your parts. And if you uh, do like metal fab or an area where you do a lot of dirty work, try to keep that in mind. Because if you get all this stuff gritty and grimy and nasty, it's just that much harder to clean it up. It can present problems later down the road. Probably going to do this in two parts. We'll do the top end one day and the bottom end the next. Uh, a lot of people said that they like the longer, more detailed videos. So I'm going to try to do a couple more of those. Uh, if there's anything out there that you guys would like to see, let's do a video on. Just uh, drop us a line and we'll see what we can do. The new motor that's in the car, I think it's going to do us pretty good. So far it seems to run pretty decent, just ain't had no time to take it to the track. We took it one time and got rained on. And then this weekend we had the Bracket Nationals that had the drag strip pretty much well locked down for the whole weekend. Could have went to another track down the road, but I don't know. They're kind of stricter on the rules and they might take one look at that unit and say, no, nah, I don't think so. valve covers they're really good parts holders so I try to take and put that side's parts and that side's valve covers that right there does not look good that is no bueno right there Go to the other side, see what else is going on. Kind of weird, the motor never, never developed the mist, but this definitely had a valve that wasn't opening and closing over there. Definitely got an issue. As you can see that right there. I don't know if we had the lifter come apart or what we got going on. We'll pull the intake off. We got the same thing over here on this side. Got the same thing. It's got a hydraulic roller cam in it. Um, it's it was used in the cam it was we touched it up trying to it was the cam was probably pretty much well junk to be honest with you but we we're trying to stay on a super cheap tight budget and uh we had two lobes that was wore pretty decent uh, we cleaned them up the best we could and surprisingly those ain't the ones that are messed up but uh we'll pull this thing the rest of the way apart and see what's going on with it
whenever pulling this stuff apart, I like to do what uh, I call it like the four corner test. You know how when you go to look at a car, you look at all four corners, make sure nothing's been hit or crunched or beat on or whatever, whatnot. Kind of do the same with this. Once you start messing with cams, it's got a little bit more than 100,000 slipped over stock. Start running into a lot of issues with stuff hitting. pretty good uh, one thing you want to if you're not familiar with these they got a spot that's machined for the the stud to go down and clamp down and the other end is like that it's not machined uh, you can actually get them on there uh, my buddy did it before got them on there and wasn't paying attention and he kept on having problems with it popping the the rockers off and that's what it was is he had it turned like that and it only had a few threads catching on the stud and it was working them loose and popping them off so uh, if you're unfamiliar with the roller rockers just make sure you got that that flange up to your bolting stud area you want to look make sure ain't got no damage is this in here a lot of times if you ain't got the right uh, push rods in it or the valve springs are too big it'll bind up in there and smack uh, these look like they're doing pretty good for us next thing you want to look at is your push rod want to make sure the ends ain't been smashed in any and then you want to make sure you can see through them if they get plugged up or something like that it'll cause you problems Most of the time when these uh, rocker arms fail, it's in this area right here. These will usually crack, like split across there. Or this uh, tip right here, it'll get excessive play in it and then you're not getting good lash because it's always changing because it's rolling around like on the cam itself. Rob was bent, but seems to be all right. You guys remember the first motor you ever tore down? Remember when I was a kid? The first thing I ever tore apart was a quadrajet carburetor. And, you know, neighborhood kids, there was four or five of us, and I had all them kids convinced that that carburetor was a go-kart motor. I don't know, I, I pulled that off for six months. And then uh, one of them finally got a go-kart and kind of called me on my stuff a little bit. But, had them convinced for six months. I bet you I pulled that carburetor part 30 times. Show you guys another area to watch out for is right in here. Sometimes at full lift, that'll bind in there. 
So you want to make sure you got the clearance. If you're getting bindage there, normal means you got the wrong size, wrong length push rods in it, and you'll have to adjust for that. So far everything looks okay other than the metal shavings and the see that right there don't do that don't drop it on the ground if you do wipe it off because the cleaner you keep it taken it apart the easier it is to clean when you go to put it back together I can't tell you how many people I see just take and throw it in the dirt and like man We're looking all right. Right, this one over here was the first one that was loose. See everything looks good. The wheel rolls nice. It's firm. There's not excessive play right in there. It's not cracked anywhere. That's another thing you want to make sure you got is good light where you're working. So you can see all that stuff. If it was a little dim in here, you could easily missing stuff that push rod looks like it's bent a little bit no, maybe not so you can check up in there to make sure it's not getting hammered on, beat up, check in there, uh, if you run in the stud girdle on the motor, want to make sure you check across this, the bridge of this, because a lot of times it will come up and hit that stud girdle, and could give you some problems. See that right there? Looks like it smacked across there for some reason. It's on the intake valve. I know the piston to valve clearance in this motor was really tight. Uh, we put a little bit thicker head gasket in it to help it out some. But it may not have been enough. Of course there's only one that I've seen it on. It may have been from something previous. But it kind of looked fresh to me. You don't even need the intake bolts on them.
this one wasn't too bad. Sometimes they get pretty rough. We got some more race stuff in here. Alright guys, whenever you go to pull a cam out of a motor and you're going to plan on reusing the cam and lifters, you got to make sure that whatever lifter you take out, it goes back on that same exact lobe when you put it back together. What it is is they wear a pattern and say if you take the number one intake lifter and put it on the number eight exhaust valve when you go to put it back together, not all the time, but a lot of times it'll eat that lobe off the cam or to destroy the lifter. So if you got the intentions to reuse in the, the lifters, uh, just make sure you get a box, mark it up to where it's got the, the hole that it came out of, like your one intake, one exhaust, two intake, two exhaust, etc., etc., and just be sure you put your lifters on that. Uh, on a roller cam, it doesn't matter as much, but it's still good practice to go ahead and do it same way but it's not as crucial but it's definitely on a solid cam or a hydraulic cam it's a must if you don't you'll you'll wipe it out every single time I don't see nothing wrong in here uh, one thing you want to watch out is uh, sometimes you get into lifters that are offset and by that, you see how the um, the push rod pretty much will sit in the center of the lifter. They have them to where they sit to one side or the other. And you can take and spin these in such a way to where you get it clocked out of time. And then you'll have the wrong valve, valve offset. So you always want to make sure you just pay real close attention to that. Uh, you want to always line up your offset lifter with your offset rocker. Uh, you can run an offset lifter with a standard rocker, but it puts the, the push rod at a pretty good angle. And most of the time it don't work out for you, but there is some instances where it'll do right by you. Say the two that... Two that was loose. I don't see nothing wrong. Look down there in the cam hole. It looks looks okay. Say so most of this stuff was kind of on its last leg. We was hoping to put it together and have a little bit of a hot rod, but it's not panning out so for, so far for us. Okay guys, I pulled the, the valley pan out, so you can see, we got some issues. I 
I'm surprised it would have made it up that far, but. <laughs> you see that right there? I don't know what that's all about. There's. Seen that on both sides, it's like little aluminum slivers. I don't know guys, we're gonna pull the head heads off and see what that tells us. I always like to take the center one out first, or take it loose first and then run it back in about three or four threads and then take the rest of them out. I'll show you why I do that in a second. pulling these apart and your uh, head bolts have washers make sure you keep them together because it's easy for them to be stuck to the block and then you or to the head and you move the head and then all of a sudden you're missing that washer and then you're having to come up with something huh? for that so always double check make sure you got the washer off the head Alright, you know, I told you about that one bolt. The reason why I leave that in there is so you can take and go ahead and break the, the seal between the head and the block. You ain't gotta worry about it falling off. You know that bolt's that bolt's got you. This actually broke free pretty easy. Sometimes they can be on there pretty pretty hardcore. Something else I like to do. These big block Chevy heads are really heavy, so I get me two 3 8 bolts. I put one on the intake side of the, the head. Come on, Wobies. This is American. Man, that's a lot more angle than. Then put the other one on the exhaust. I know you can grab it by the intake ports and the exhaust ports, but it's, this seems like it just gives you a little bit more leverage. And you get a little bit more handle on it. Not only that, if they're greasy and stuff, keeps it from. Real bad. One thing I should have done is I should have drained the water out of the block. That way I would have known if there was any water in the cylinders. I didn't do that. I should have done it. But. stuff at the end of the studies uh, all these go into a water jacket so you got to put a sealer in it Guys, we're gonna do 
the same thing over here. Put the bolts in the head. So what's you guys' favorite channels out there? Uh, I've noticed there's a lot of really good channels out there, but they're really hard to find. Uh, some of the best ones I just happen to stumble upon. So if you got a channel out there, let me know. I'd like to check you out. Uh, there's Chris at Iron Head Garage. He's building a bad, bad 55 Chevy Gasser. It's going to be really cool when it's done. He's uh, making sure he's doing all the little details upright. Uh, you guys might want to check him out. Uh, there's a guy named Drag Racing with Josh. He goes over a lot of the no prep and street outlaw stuff. He's uh, coming along pretty well. And there's one I stumbled on yesterday, Average Guy Drag Racer or Average Joe Drag Racer, something like that. He's building a little Fox Body Mustang. And he's, uh, I think he's got a lot of the same mindset as me as far as not wanting you to go out there and spend a bunch of money on stuff that you don't really need. Uh, that was the first thing he was kind of going over in his video, and I really like that. Um, a lot of people say you need this, this, and this, or you watch TV shows and they say, oh, you need this, this, and this. And a lot of times you get that part and you're thoroughly disappointed and there's nothing worse than to spend three, four, five hundred bucks on something that you deem pretty much well useless. Because I've been there and done that. Guys, know how I showed you that one rocker that looked like it smacked the bottom side of the bottom side of the um, the springs on the retainer. It does look like it hit this piston. It just, just did clip it. Yeah, I see that little bit. Let the game focus. Right in there. I don't know if it hit it or not. To be honest with you, we took and uh, took a scuff pad and smoothed them out just a little bit. Let's give them a little bit more clearance. I think it's more that than it, than it hit. Alright, I guess we'll roll this baby over and see what the bottom end looks like. dogs and you've got antifreeze in the block make sure you get that picked up because the dogs and cats they really like the way it tastes I guess it's got like a sweetness to it from what I understand and it can make them really sick or even kill them and we don't want old poochie kill him when he sees this mess on his floor. Hopefully it'll be dried up by the time he gets back.
This one right here, you see how it's rocking back and forth? That bad boy is probably gone, and I believe this bearing right here is gone too. Kind of see how it, we can see it hiding up in there. Everything else feels kind of tight. See how we got some metal shavings, like like spirals, almost like a drill bit. You know when that is not good for us. The home team has lost the game. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna dig into the bottom end, but right now we're gonna go ahead and pull this rod and main cap off and take a look at it and see what we got going on. That way we know. Don't you hate it when you know that you got junk, but you confirm the fact that you got junk? That's the worstest. Guys, I'm fixing to do what you're not supposed to do. So it's gonna get you guys not to look. Just as I thought, got a spun bearing. So I don't really know what's going on with the motor, why it would do that. Uh, it's got something to do with the rods, I believe. Means it's two cranks, and the one that we replaced before was this one right here, and it seems to be okay, but this one is definitely toast. Let's go ahead and pull that main cap off, too, because it looks like it ate it up. Whenever you guys are pulling these apart for the first time, it's very important that you take and mark all your main caps and that they go in the back back in the same spot and they got a little arrow. You want to make sure that they're pointing towards the front of the motor. And then same with all your rods. Your rods need to go 
back on the same journal they were before. Usually just take a stamp and mark them. You know, mark them according to the firing order. One, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. And then uh, these right here. Can you see how we got a, a chamfer right there or a chamfer? And then this, this side right here is more squared off. The chamfer always goes to the crank side and the two machine surfaces always go towards one another. Now that's something that's easy to get wrong or get confused on. So, just always remember that the tank towards the outside of the, towards the crank. 